welcome to our seventh annual Vet Veterans History Project. I'm Judge Chuck Smith. We anticipate continuing this event every year. As I said, this is our seventh annual. A program concerning the, this morning's events is available to you. We do have several judges and elected officials here today. I'm not going to introduce them. And the reason for that is not that I want to slight anybody or that I might misremember or forget somebody. It's that today is about you, the veterans. It's not about us. <laughs> Lake County is hosting this event along with the 19th Judicial Circuit and the Lake County Bar Association. This event is very dear to my heart. My wife, Michelle, who's here today, and I have two children. Megan, who is a lieutenant commander on active duty. She's a naval pilot and a graduate of the United States Naval Academy. She's married to Commander Michael Donnelly, who is also a Navy pilot and a graduate of the Naval Academy. Our son, Brian, just recently was sworn in as an ensign in the Naval Reserve Intelligence Program. I have deceased rel relatives, including my f late father-in-law, Lieutenant Colonel George McNamara, who was a pinpoint navigator in World War II in the Army Air Corps, um, and then served in the reserves for a number of years, flew over Normandy on the D-Day. Uh, my lineage goes back to uh, Private William Smith, who fought with the Iron Mountain Brigade at the Battle of Gettysburg, and on July 1st, uh, 1863, the first day of the battle, one of the first volleys, he was wounded and had his right arm amputated. Uh, I also had an uncle, Andy Fox, who was a doughboy in World War I. Uh, we're all extremely proud of uh, our families that have served. Uh, we will be having court reporters today transcribing the personal hi history of approximately 29 veterans. All will be provided a written form and will be recorded in the Library of Com uh, Congress. Each interview will be recorded in the library. Uh, Congress. As we sit here this morning and we look at the screens and you see those heartwarming uh, scenes of returning military and ESPN does a lot at this time of year, if it doesn't bring a tear to your eye, all I can say is your heart's not beating. Uh, I have seen the homecoming when Megan has returned from six months deployed and her little girl there to greet her. and it, it, warms the cockles of your heart to know that how appreciative people are and how wonderful it is for the family when they are reunited. And we thank all those who have served and all those who have been separated and all those right now who are separated from their families as we enter into this Thanksgiving season. I think it's kind of appropriate that in 10 days we're going to be celebrating Thanksgiving because today we say how thankful we are for our freedom and for the men and women who have ensured our freedom down through the years. Uh, persons doing the interviews today are all attorneys from, uh, from Lake County, assistant state's attorneys, assistant public defenders, and private uh, attorneys, some of whom are veterans themselves. Uh, the, the veterans to be interviewed include veterans from most conflicts since World War II. Uh, we have a soloist here today uh, who, is, who is the daughter of one of the members of our Bar Association. Her name is Jocelyn Jonam. She's a senior at Lake Forest High School, and she will be singing the National Anthem and America the Beautiful. The hot breakfast has been catered very nicely by the local Marine Corps League, and the rest of the food and drink has been provided by the Lake County Bar Foundation and others. There are several local businesses, including our Brothers Bakery and others that have donated food. Um, we are honored to have with us relatives who's, who have paid the ultimate price. Uh, Gold Star mothers and fathers. Uh, our own, uh, one of the members of our legal community here, Joni Neal, uh, is not with us today. She lost a son in Afghanistan. Ellen Dombek uh, lost sons in the Middle East. Uh, Joni's son, Wesley Wells, was US, in the U.S. Army, was killed in Afghanistan on May 20th. I'm sorry, September 20th, 2004. Ellen's son, Joseph Demock II, United States Army, was killed in Afghanistan on July 10th, 2010. Also present is Gold Star Father, Kirk Morris, who is assisting, 
in breakfast here today. His son, Jeffrey Morris, United States Marine, was killed in action April 4th, 2004 in Iraq. Finally, we have President Arlene Lally, a Gold Star wife who lost her husband in the Vietnam War. Her husband was Navy Chief Bozeman Mate Doyle Hall Parson, who was killed in action on a river in Vietnam in December of 1969. There's a Gold Star table set up over to my left. I invite you to visit with these people and tell them we will never forget the sacrifices that they made. Um, we also have present a representative of Lake County Honor Flight uh, Group, uh, Paula uh, Carbellello. Is Paula here? She raised her hand and other members of the Honor Flight. They have a table set up as well. I invite you to visit them. As you, most of you would know, the Honor Flights take veterans, World War II, uh, now Korea, now we're getting some of the Vietnam veterans to Washington uh, without charge uh, to honor their service and allow them to visit the memorials that are there. You can help. You can donate to that uh, project. They appreciate it. You can be there when these veterans return. It's, uh, as I was mentioning a moment ago about how heartwarming it is to see the service people return from conflicts, uh, to see the look on these veterans' faces when they come back and there's, the streets are lined with folks and the flags are there. It, it's something, a small way for us to say thank you. Also present, we have Rose Gray and Robin McCargill. If they're around, the, their table is also over to my left. Uh, they're here on behalf of the Quilts of Valor. If you would like, uh, they would love to have each, inter, each veteran sign a small fabric, uh, small square of fabric to be included in a quilt. The squares will be incorporated in the quilt to be prominently displayed uh, around the county building. The Lake County Bar Association, Lake County Bar Foundation are assisting in several of the expenses, including the photography. Their photographer will be taking the group, <coughs> group photo at the end of the matters here. If you're not already done so, upon leaving the room, stop outside for an individual photograph before being interviewed by your assigned attorney or court reporter. Uh, your family and friends are free <coughs> to be in, in the interview room uh, if, you, if that is okay with you. Some of these uh, recollections of the events of war are difficult on some of our veterans to go through. Take whatever food or drink you want into the interview. Uh, there are representatives of the media present. They may ask you to take your picture to interview you after your official interview with the Library of Congress or ask to, <coughs> to be present for a portion of that. That is totally up to the veteran as to whether they want the press there. I have placed on the tables and around uh, the lobby here a letter uh, from Major Abdul Raham Ramin to the widow of Major Brent Taylor and their seven children. Major Taylor was killed in action on November 3, 2018. This letter says more than I could ever say about what, the vet, what our armed forces do, what you veterans have done. This major describes how his culture was much different than ours, their attitude towards women much different than ours. And it was all changed by the efforts of this brave mayor of a city in Salt Lake City who was killed in action just nine days ago. I invite you to read it. It's, uh, it will really bring home what Veterans Day is about. Soon the Pledge of Allegiance will be recited. If anyone is present as a veteran, regulations allow you to salute uncovered and not in uniform. So it is appropriate for you to stand and salute if you are able, uh, both upon the presentation of the National Anthem and the recital of the Pledge of Allegiance. So with that, I would like to Move on with the national anthem. Jocelyn, if you'd be so kind. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars 
through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Thank you, Jocelyn. That was beautiful. She'll have one other rendition for us at the close of the program. Uh, I just marvel at her talent to be able to do that without musical accompaniment. At this time, I'd call on the young Marines to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Arms. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Marines, thank you. At this time, I'd call, uh, please be seated. I call upon uh, the Honorable Jay Yukina, our Chief Judge, for a few remarks. Anyway, good morning at, at this great event. Even though I'm not a veteran, I have many members of my family, both cousins and uncles, who were veterans. Some served in World War II, some served during Vietnam. And I understand the sacrifices they made. I had an uncle in the submarine service, you know, another one in the Air Force who actually went from the lowest enlisted rank by the time he retired decades later, was actually a general, a particular uncle I'm particularly proud of. But uh, anyway, I want to once again say good morning to all of you. As the Chief Judge of the 19th Judicial Circuit, I'd like to welcome all the veterans to be interviewed, their families and friends, as well as all of the people here in support of this Library of Congress event. Our judicial family has been in support of this effort for seven years and will continue to do so in the future. As you can see from the program, the veterans have numerous Lake County entities that want to celebrate their service. And I want to thank you for your attendance. I want to hope, enjoy, hope everyone enjoys this program today. And at, at this point, we'll have our acting county board chairman, uh, Carol Calabresi, come up. Welcome, and thank you for being here today. I'm so proud that Lake County connect, um, conducts the Veterans History Project every year. Storytelling is the most powerful communication tool in history. Being able to hear firsthand from our veterans helps us experience the information, not just to hear it. Stories are the way we remember. This project is truly preserving our history and the legacy of these brave men and women who honorably served our country. As a grandmother of four, I want them and all children to know and understand about our history and remember those who sacrificed so much to defend our freedoms. At this time, I'd like to take a moment to read the county board resolution honoring military veterans. Whereas the United States annually observes November 11th as Veterans Day to honor and recognize military veterans who've served in the United States Armed Forces. And whereas some individuals have paid the ultimate price for freedom by sacrificing their lives for the safety and security of Americans. Whereas Lake County has a unique role in our nation's defense as the home of Great Lakes Naval Station and Fort Sheridan Reserve Center. And whereas Lake County's Veteran Assistance Commission has played a vital role 
in providing local resources and assistance programs to support veterans and families. And whereas there are an estimated 34,957 veterans who have served in America's armed forces that reside in Lake County, and whereas Lake County will continue to recognize and support our country's service members and their families in peace, in crisis, and in war. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed, the County Board honors the courage and sacrifice of America's servicemen and women who serve and hopes for the safe return of those who are currently serving to offend, defend American freedom and values on the 12th day of November. On behalf of the entire County Board, I want to thank the veterans for your stories and for sharing them today, but most of all, for serving your country so bravely. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jay and Carol. Uh, it's my honor now to introduce our veterans. Uh, not all of them can stand. If you just raise your hand, I have a little summary of uh, your service to our country. And again, I want to personally uh, take the moment to say thank you to each and every one of you. Albert Manfrey, United States Army, World War II, the last surviving member of the Band of Brothers, one of the first. Yeah, what can you do? One of the first American paratroopers, active from August of 1942 to September 1945. Staff Sergeant, 101st Airborne, also known as the Big Red One. 506th Parachute Reg Regiment, Easy Company Medic, two Purple Hearts, wounded in Holland, parachuted into Holland, France, Market Garden, Bastogne, Belgium, Burschengarden, Germany, occupied Hitler's Eagle's Nest, distinguished unit citation, numerous medals and honors. Alvin Isbicki, United States Marines, World War II. <laughs> Active from March 1944 to July 1946. Corporal saw action throughout much of the Pacific and also in occupied Japan, destroying munitions. Primary job was serving as Marine Corps frogman on recon and demolition missions and amphibious landings. Was it uh, Tarwa, Saipan, Tinian, Raruka, Okinawa, and Iwo Jima? Uh, Andrew C. Weston, United States Army. <laughs> Active, 1965 to 1968. First Lieutenant, Battle of Hue. Uh, Combat Infantry Brigade uh, badge, I'm sorry, Bronze Star, Purple Heart, and other medals. Mortar uh, Platoon Leader and Company Executive Officer. Arthur Mills, United States Army, World War II. Sergeant Mills was stationed in uh, Seispo in Tokyo and served on MacArthur's Honor Guard. My favorite, B.J. Carroll, United States Army veteran. <laughs> B.J. has been a distinguished attorney in Lake County for a number of years, a mentor to many of us, and an outstanding patriot. In his 30 years of active duty from 1963 to 1999, he retired as a full colonel. He was part of also the Big Red One, the 101st Airborne, Legion of Merit, Bronze Star, Meritorious Service Medals, and Army Commendation Medals. In Vietnam at Buen Hoi and uh, Pubic Bay was also involved in the Tet Offensive. Chris Field, the United States Navy. <laughs> Served during World War II on the USS uh, Wasp, CV-18, 
active November 1944 to June 1946. Aviation mechanic on the flight deck, uh, ship at the battles of Iwo Jima and Okinawa, preparing for the attack on mainland Japan. After the war ended, went into the Atlantic to bring soldiers home from Europe. Greg Kopstein, uh, United States Navy. <laughs> 28 years of active and naval reserve service. Highest rank obtained, captain. Uh, started as an enlisted, uh, quite a story to come from enlisted to become a right below flag rank. Start, uh, it was an anti-sub looking for Russian subs on air crews and flew military uh, to Dominican Republic. If he flew anti-sub missions, he must have been on a plane my daughter flies, the P-3. Uh, he was a commissioned officer from 1971 to 1998. Activated for the theater of Desert Storm and Desert Shield, served in Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Bahrain, and the United Arab Emirates. Daphne Matthews, United States Navy. <laughs> Active in reserves from 1984 to 2011. Highest rank, Captain, Medical Corps. Activated for Desert Storm, also activated for Iraq and Kuwait actions on the war on terrorism. David Rayclaw, uh, United States Navy. <laughs> Served from 1961 to 1967, obtained the rank of Lieutenant Commander, 04, and also and served in Vietnam. Donald McCluskey, Navy. Chief McCluskey retired as a Master Chief Petty Officer, E-9, Career Navy from 1966 to 1992, avionic technician, anti-sub, various squadrons, bases, several commendations and medals. Edward Dittweiler, United States Army. <laughs> Staff Sergeant Dittweiler was active from 1964 to 1968 served in Vietnam, was assigned to the Army Security Agency in Japan in support of the war in Vietnam in addition to other matters. Edwin Mike Brooker, Marines. <laughs> Corporal Brooker served from June of 64 to June of uh, 68 in the Dang and the Tet Offensive. Gerald Robinson, Vietnam War veteran, U.S. Army. He was 25 years in the Army, from 1967 to 1992. He was uh, uh, enlisted and ultimately left as a lieutenant colonel. Uh, again, quite a remarkable accomplishment. Background mainly signals and electronic warfare, numerous medals and citations, including the Legion of Merit, numerous uh, locations in Vietnam. James A. Askew, Jr., United States Navy. He was a veteran of the Vietnam conflict and the Cold War, active from July 1966 to October 1969, Petty Officer 3rd Class, served on two ships assigned to the Atlantic Fleet. James Charnel, United States Marine Corps. <laughs> Captain Charnel was active from 1967 to 1973, the 3rd Marine Air Wing, Vietnam Service Senior Air Director, Top Secret Security Officer. I could tell you a lot of things what he did, but then he'd have to kill me, so we'll just see. <laughs> Joseph Bedamo, World War II, United States Army. <laughs> Private Benamo saw action with the 10th Mountain Division in Italy. Joseph Simonet, United States Army. Joseph was a Vietnam combat veteran, again serving with the Big Red 1, 101st Airborne, the Screaming Eagles. Service from October 67 to October 69. Medals include the Bronze Star for rescuing several, several soldiers while under heavy fire, combat action ribbon 
at Peku Denang and Hue. Uh, Keith Bain, United States Navy. <laughs> Lieutenant J.D. Bain served in the Vietnam War, was active from 62 to 65. He was a gunnery officer on the USS Maddox, DD-731. The Maddox and the Turner Jory were involved in the 1964 Gulf of Tonkin incident, which served as a catalyst for U.S. involvement in the act of war. Two ships came under fire from North Vietnamese gunboats. Leanne Feidrich, United States Army. <laughs> Master Sergeant Feidrich served from November 42 to December 45. He was a quartermaster uh, uh, at Normandy, North, uh, Northern France, Rhineland, Arden, Central Europe, uh, driver Red Ball Express, several medals. Margaret Neff, United States Air Force. <laughs> Captain Neff served from 1960 to 1966 in the Nurse Corps, Cold War, and the Vietnam era. Various bar bases in Europe, North Africa and the Middle East on flight assignments. Assigned to the hospital in Germany, high alert status involving Berlin Wall in 1961, Cuban Missile Crisis in 1962, and flew the Berlin, uh, Berlin Corridor. Michael Carpata, United States Navy, World War II. <laughs> Michael was aboard uh, landing craft and LST, landing troops uh, and gear on several locations in support of the war. One of five brothers that all served during World War II, and all five returned safely. Richard Rich Elmore, Vietnam War, U.S. Army. <laughs> he was active from 1967 to 1988. Initially enlisted, attaining the rank of Sergeant E-5. Later commissioned, retiring as a lieutenant com uh, uh, colonel at that Dong Ha, Rock Pile, My Lock, uh, or My Lock Camp, Special Forces, K San with the Marines, K Gio Bridge, in <coughs> country from 1969 to 1970. Uh, lieutenant Colonel Elmore received the Bronze Star and several commendations and medals. Richard B. Leonard, United States Navy. <laughs> Richard, Richard served in Vietnam uh, at a naval medical facility at Da Nang. Active service was from 1966 to 1968, attaining the highest rank of a lieutenant commander. Richard uh, Bunk, uh, United States Army. Sergeant Bunk served from 1966 to 1968 with the 1st Cavalry Division, General Custer's original unit. He served in the Tet Offensive and numerous other battles, combat infantry badge, and other accommodations. Saw action as a rifleman in the jungle. Robert Komar, United States Army. He is a veteran of the Vietnam conflict and the Cold War. He was active from 1967 to 1987. He attained the rank of major, saw action at PQ, and received a bronze medal, three meritorious service medals, and two Army commendation medals. Robert Paulin, United States Army. <laughs> he is a Korean War veteran uh, was a corporal from 1953 to 1961. He was an Army security agency, signals background, courier. He was in uh, Korea uh, and suffered frost uh, uh, bite on both his toes and legs in that uh, war. Rosario Consiglio Sr. Uh, He holds the distinction of having served in World War II, the Korean War, and the Vietnam War in the United States Navy. 
He was active duty from January of 1944 to March of 1964. Chief Petty Officer, UDT, Underwater Demolitions, Frogman, SEAL, may be the oldest and longest serving United States SEAL, Persis participated in numerous military campaigns during his uh, career, including Imo Jima, Okinawa, Saipan, Tinian, he received a Purple Heart in 1945, top secret missions in Korea and Vietnam. Ryan Bentel, United States Marine Corps. <laughs> Sergeant Bentelli was active from 1998 to 2006, participated in Operation Iraqi Freedom Two Tours, Combat Action Ribbon, along with several other awards. Thomas Gilder, United States Army. Actum from 1965 to 67, obtained the rank of uh, first lieutenant, assigned to Nang T uh, Nha Tang in Vietnam. Awards include Vietnam Combat Medal and Army Commendation Medal. Finally, Wayne Woodbury, United States Air Force. <laughs> Wayne, Wayne was enlisted in the Air Force from 1952 to 1956. He flew, uh, was involved in the Korean War and was a staff sergeant. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the veterans we are here to honor today. I thank you all for attending. We are going to have a rendition now of America the Beautiful by Ms. Jonam again. I would say if you were not at a table and didn't get a copy of the letter that was sent to uh, uh, Major Taylor's wife, they're available over at the information desk. I, I highly recommend you read that. Now if we could have uh, Ms. Jonam and then we will take a group photograph and we'll conduct the uh, interviews. America the Beautiful, thank you. Thank you again, Ms. Jonam. You have a wonderful talent and you display it well. Thank everybody for taking part of your Veterans Day to honor these men and women who are here who have served our country. At this time, I'm going to ask all the veterans, so we're going to move some tables around here. We're going to take a group photograph and then we're going to do the interview. Well,